Yellow Productions presents, actually I guess you just heard that, a live stream for 20 airplane travel tips for a more comfortable flight. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions, and last week I did a live stream about 20 things you can do in an airport to have a better time in an airport, and so this time I'm going to be talking about the part where we're on an airplane. And uh, so welcome everybody on to the live stream. By the way, I'm using a new live streaming setup today. So can I just get a quick check from people on the live stream? Can you hear me? Do I sound okay? Is everything okay? I would love for somebody to, they, they said they like the new graphic. So that's good. I'm hoping this all works out. And by the way, at the end of this live stream, I'm gonna be giving out uh, this amenity kit to everybody who commented on the Facebook post from a few weeks ago. And uh, so excellent. Excellent. It sounds like people say everything is sounding good. All right, we can begin. So the first thing to know before you fly and the first tip to have going on an airplane starts with dressing right. The attire is very important. And certainly one could say wear yellow. Actually, I never wear yellow on a plane and I'll give you a reason why in just a second. But my first tips for dressing right on an airplane are to always like bring layers. So I think it's really important to have long sleeves, to have a jacket, maybe even a hoodie. You know, I don't know, some of you have probably sat under that air conditioning vent and your head gets really, really cold. So it's good to have layers. If your arms are exposed, or your legs are exposed, things to cover them up because not every plane has blankets. I also like a tire that has lots of pockets. I love pockets in the shirts, pockets in the pants because you're going to have boarding passes and things and it's nice to have places to stow those. And so I mentioned yellow shirts. Uh, I never wear yellow shirts. I always wear these bamboo shirts that I have. I have these black bamboo shirts and I love bamboo as a fabric for an airplane because well, frankly, it never smells. It's really nice, and if a long day of traveling, you know, you don't want to be on that 18th hour connection going like, am I odiferous? Is that why nobody's sitting next to me and stay smelling fresh? Um, for socks, I like to wear merino wool socks. Uh, they're pretty good also for the same reason. They don't collect a lot of odor, and they also keep your feet nice and cool and dry. Uh, by the way, on the shirt, I recommend wearing dark colors. Why dark colors on the plane? because you're going to be sitting with a monitor or something that you're trying to like watch TV or your screen or your iPad and if you're wearing bright colors well that will reflect off of the screen and you'll just be staring at your white shirt or your yellow shirt but if you're wearing black it kind of blends into the screen so I always wear black on planes and then that way if I spill something on myself you can't see it all that much as well uh, and then finally shoes wear shoes that are easy to take off and slip on because if you're on a long flight and you're trying to sleep. You know, most people don't really sleep with shoes on. It is nice to slip your shoes on off. Uh, all right, so I'm streaming both to Facebook and to YouTube. For those of you who are on YouTube, uh, you'll see kind of some new effects as we get to the end. For those of you on Facebook, I'm still working on those new effects, so you're seeing the live stream just from the Android device. Uh, so a few comments. Uh, Jenny on Facebook is tuning in from the Hilton Hawaiian Village. That's awesome, Jenny. Very cool. And uh, Jenny said she went to the uh, Dole Plantation. That's awesome. Uh, Jenny, I'm glad to hear you're enjoying Hawaii. Um, Poke uh, has a comment about clothing and he says, I always use a bomber jacket because they're warm, had quite a lot of pockets with zippers. I also use thermal long sleeves because you know it beats having four layers. That's a good tip. Uh, Naguerre Locks' black shirt is a good tip. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and then Xavier P says, never wear shorts on an airplane, even if you're going somewhere hot. Uh, Xavier, the, the only caveat I might give to that, and about the only time I wear shorts, is if I know I'm starting someplace hot, and I'm going someplace hot, and it's a short flight. Like, San Diego to Las Vegas, it's an hour, so then I wear shorts. On longer things, then... Uh, I don't do that. Um, UAL Kingpin says, my video is fixed, it's no longer flipped, and that's actually because I've got a whole new setup for how I do this streaming. Uh, I'm not doing it on the iPad anymore. I'm doing it out of a camera to HDMI capture to vMix and streaming it through there. Um, so it all got rather complicated, so I'm glad to see this is working. Uh, I'll probably have a video about my live streaming new setup in a future thing, but I gave up on YouTube fixing the reverse text. Uh, 
Uh, Kirk asked if I pray before I fly. Kirk, I do not pray before I fly, but great question. Uh, Sandra D's Adventure says, I touch the plane before I get on the plane. Interesting. Give it, give it a good feel from the outside. All right. Tip number two to make yourself have a better in-flight experience on the plane is to bring noise-canceling headphones. Or, if you don't want those, then bring earplugs. And uh, so I always travel with a set of Bose noise-canceling headphones. They make three different types. They make the over-ear, they make the on-ear, and they make the in-ear. And frankly, I've bought all three, and I've tried all three, and I prefer the over-ear. I find them to be the most comfortable. And it's not just so that you can hear the movies better, but we'll, like a whole thread through this will be about doing things on the plane to make it easier for yourself to sleep. And if you want to sleep, then noise canceling headphones really help because you won't be distracted by all the engine rumbling, all the people. It doesn't do any good to block out crying babies, but it does do a really good job of blocking out that engine rumble. And if you've never tried noise canceling headphones, they are truly a magical invention. Um, Earplugs are another option, and actually, in this amenity kit that I'll be giving away, uh, United always has a pair of earplugs in there, too. That might drown out the babies. Uh, if you have ear pressure, like if you're someone who gets a lot of ear pressure on the plane, there's actually this product called Earplanes Earplugs, and they're special earplugs designed to give you more flow through the ears to help reduce um, the ear pressure. So you can check those out, or if you have ear pressure, a trick that I've used uh, is to chew gum, right? If you chew gum, it'll kind of have your jaw going and take out that ear pressure. Uh, Max Marlowe asks, how does Topher fly? That's a good question. I don't have Topher's bag up here right now, but I have a little bag that Topher goes in and he goes in my backpack. Uh, I never um, check him in or things like that. He's always in my backpack. Um, Brandon Torres says, your quality is better with the camera setup. Brandon, you mean this camera setup? Uh, I'm hoping so. And I'm starting with um, 720p streaming, and I'm going to ramp it up over the next few weeks, but I wanted to start with something that I knew kind of would work and wasn't too risky to do. Um, Jenny Fed says, Hawaiian Airlines flight on Saturday to Oahu was the coldest flight we have ever been on. Brought, bought two blankets and wore jackets and pants. Yeah, Jenny, I find, yeah, flights to Hawaii are often really cold. Flights to Europe are cold. Any, like, long-haul flight, they like to keep cold. And I think part of the reason for that is on long-haul flights, they want to encourage people to sleep. And so, like, people to sleep like it cold. Yeah, but I've been some places where if you don't have blankets and jackets and things like that, you'll be, you'll be shivering the whole time, and that's awful. Um, Dax says, the sound is great. That is great to hear. Uh, you can't see it, but up here, I've actually got a boom microphone uh, that has a thing up here. Like I say, uh, I'll, I'll post a picture to Facebook afterwards if you want to take a look at the new setup. It is pretty neat, I think. Um, Gray says, do you like flying to Vegas? It's my favorite. You know, I'm so-so on flying to Vegas because Vegas... It's so close to San Diego that it's like six of one, half a dozen of another to fly or drive. Um, all right. Number three, my third tip uh, for flying on a plane is to bring an eye mask. And again, I'll be giving out this amenity kit. And one of the things that's typically almost always in amenity kits is um, eye masks. And the reason why you would want to bring an eye mask is because, well, if you're trying to sleep, it's a lot nicer if you don't have bright lights in your eyes. Uh, particularly if you get a bad seat, like the seat next to the bathroom or the seat next to the galley. Those always have bright lights, and having this, you know, it blocks out the light from the television monitors, or you might be sitting next to that person who feels like they need to keep the window open all the time, uh, so do bring an eye mask. There's a lot of different ones, um, but... Uh, you know, I don't think you need to spend a fortune on an eye mask, just something simple. I do like ones, not that they're too small, they have to be big enough to like cover your nose and not let light in from a whole bunch of areas. And whenever I'm traveling, I have a shirt pocket right here, then that's where I put the eye mask in my little shirt pocket, so that when I do want it, I can just pull it out of that place. Um, Grace says, I've been on a flight that was so hot it was so uncomfortable someone passed out. Oh my gosh, that was a hot flight, Grace. Where were you going on that? 
flight. Uh, and Bobcat 500 Gaming says, let's give Yellow Productions 1 million subscribers. I appreciate that, Bobcat Gaming. Thank you very much. If you have some friends, definitely share it with them. Uh, love more people here in the live streams watching the videos. Um, Ricky says, hello, Yellow Productions. Hello, Ricky. And uh, Sandra D's Adventure says, I've always wondered what is the window etiquette? So, Sandra, in my mind, the window etiquette, you can basically observe it if you fly on a Dreamliner. The Dreamliner is the plane that automatically like dims the windows. It doesn't have any window slides, but they can dim the windows centrally. And so on a Dreamliner, what they do is as soon as the first service is done, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever the first service is on a long haul, then they dim the cabin and they dim the windows. So the window etiquette would be after the first service when people are trying to sleep to then put your shade down uh, and then keep it down until the next meal service, right? Which is usually the meal service before landing. Um, Joshua asks, have you ever experienced jet lag? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends what you mean by jet lag, what you consider that, how bad it is, but uh, sure, I've been tired and things like that and hard time sleeping, but um, we'll talk more about jet lag and how to beat that as we go through this. Um, and uh, Ricky asks if I can say hello to his wife, Lynn. Hello, Ricky's wife, Lynn. Uh, hopefully you're watching and enjoying Yellow Productions along with Ricky. All right. The fourth tip for going on a plane is to bring luggage that fits. You know, a really stressful way to start your airplane trip is if you have a big carry-on and you're trying to stuff it in the bin and it won't fit and there's no place to put it and you put it in sideways and you put it in the other way and you put it this way. You know, don't be that person that everybody's looking at going like, has this person not taken geometry because, you know, the round peg won't fit in the square hole? Uh, maybe that's the other way around, but it's a, better to have a little smaller luggage um, and when you're putting it in, if it is a little tight, definitely try those different things. Sideways, front ways, and always make sure the bin closes. Make sure the bin closes because you also don't want to have your luggage in there and the flight attendants come by and try to close the bin and yours won't close and everything is full, guess whose luggage is being checked? It's your luggage because it's too big and it doesn't fit. But maybe there was plenty of room, uh, but you just didn't put it in. Uh, Chase and Bailey says, what is that airplane kit called? This airplane kit, this is a amenity kit. This is the United Amenity Kit. That's typically what they call things uh, in business or first class. If you're going business or first class international, they'll always give you something like this. And we were flying business class on our way back from Seoul, South Korea. And so that's where this particular United Polaris amenity kit comes from. And Kirk says, YouTube finally fixed the reverse image images. Actually, Kirk, I gave up on YouTube fixing the reverse text images. And with this whole new setup, I'm doing my own camera and my own streaming. I'm not streaming off an iOS iPad device. That was the issue. The selfie cameras on either an Android or iOS device were reversed. And they said they, they just weren't going to fix it. So I gave up on them. Um, and hopefully got a little bit of a video and audio upgrade in the process. Um, UAL Kingpin says he works for United. UAL Kingpin, I bet you have plenty of amenity kits then. Uh, Max Marlowe says, what's the best airline with premium economy to Japan? Max, that's a great question. And uh, when, I, when I give this away, um, one of the things that uh, what I asked people during the giveaway, and I've got these comments that I'll go through, is what's people's favorite airline and why? Uh, usually when I go to Japan, I fly United in Economy Plus, um, but uh, I don't think that's the best. You know, a and &A, Japan Airlines, that would be who I would recommend if you're flying to Japan and you're just paying and, like, loyalty is not, like, a thing for you. Um, all right. The fifth tip uh, for flying on a plane, and this is related to luggage, you can put your luggage in any overhead bin. You know, and this is one of those, like, 
etiquette and not really sort of things. And I think back in the day, people were like, you know, your bin space is the space above your seat. But if you do the math, not really, because there's not enough room in the bins for everybody to have a suitcase above their seat. And actually, you'll hear flight attendants say, you know, the overhead bin space is a shared space. It's first come, first serve. And so if you're walking on the plane and you've got a roller board and you're looking, you're like seated in the middle of the plane and you look and all those overhead bins are full, but there's one right at the beginning of economy that's not, put your suitcase there. Uh, it is also much easier when you're leaving the plane to pull your suitcase from the front rather than being that person that has to go back, right? That's always the thing, and you see people always do that where they're like, there's no, like I passed where there was space, and I'm in my seat, and there's no space, and I go further back because when you exit the plane, people are trying to come out, and you're trying to go in. Uh, just like, don't be that person. And if you are that person and you do have to go backwards, I would just employ you to like, why don't you just wait till people get off instead of like having to like shimmy through the middle aisle, right? Like that shimmy is just kind of an awful thing. Um, Dorit says, I put my luggage in the bin across from me so I can keep an eye on it at all times. That is a great tip. Uh, and actually, I've uh, I've done that before too. I just I use any overhead bin that's nearby, but across from me is pretty good. I like it directly above me because I'm like an aisle seat kind of person, and so if I'm in the aisle seat and it's directly above me, then it gives me easy access to like get my stuff out, as opposed to like the other way where I'm having to like lean over the person. I do. After I put my stuff in the overhead bin, I am paying attention to it pretty much the whole time to make sure, like, until the bin is closed, to make sure that people didn't, like, move it around in such a way that the bin no longer closes and then mine's the one that no longer closes, right? That's lousy. Uh, Nocturne Light says, is it true that many Las Vegas hotels are overcharging with resort fees? Yeah, one of the videos I just did, uh, if you're a regular subscriber, is the um, top best luxury hotels in Las Vegas. Is it true they're overcharging? I don't know, the resort fees are really expensive in Las Vegas. I hate resort fees. So yes, it's true that they have some really expensive resort fees. Uh, Kirk asked if I use Seat Guru to rate your seat. Ooh, Kirk, you know, I should. I use Seat Guru to tell whether my seat's going to be good or not, um, but I don't use Seat Guru to like put a rating myself in. Maybe I should actually contribute to those social things because that's like the only way that they work. Um, Sandra D's Adventure says, Pro tip for those of us that are less tall at four foot eleven, I put my backpack under the seat in front of me and use as a footrest to avoid my legs hurting on the long flight. Sandra, that's a great tip to have a footrest for you. I wish that would work for me. <clears throat> at uh, about six feet tall, I need that area clear for my legs to go in it, uh, but that's convenient. Uh, Max Marlow says, what's the best app to monitor flights? Um, so... I generally use the Airlines app, and I find that'll be the best one for the airline. If you fly United, Southwest, American Airlines, whatever it is, if they have an app, use their app. Uh, I think another great app is, uh, it's like Flight Aware, I think what it's called. There's like another flight tracker. Uh, but uh, anybody else on the live stream, um, what's your favorite app to monitor the status of flights? I I'm curious if I'm like out of touch or something like that. Uh, Joshua said, what are the best things to eat on a plane that won't give you a stomach ache? I recently came back from Hawaii and I ate macadamia nuts and I almost threw up on the runway at LA. Oh, Joshua, that is awful. We'll talk about food in another one of these numbers coming up. Uh, and Kirk says, did you see LAX allows you to fly with weed? Yes, Kirk, I did. If you follow me on Facebook, uh, I posted that just a couple days ago. And what's funny about um, LAX allowing you to fly with uh, marijuana, marijuana right, has been legalized in California. And so the Los Angeles Police Department Airport Division has said uh, they won't arrest people for carrying under, I don't know, 30 grams of marijuana or something like that. Um, but they do remind people that it may not be legal in their destination, and they also want to remind people that uh, it's also not legal in federal airspace. So it could be this catch-22 that when you're in the air, you may actually be breaking the federal law with possession of marijuana. Um, but that's what they said. Uh, Poke says, um, related to apps, uh, they use Flight Radar 24. They tend to be accurate most of the time. I've heard good things about Flight Radar 24. Um, 
All right, and uh, William Brown, his tip is to book my flight time at 1 a.m. or 1.30 a.m. Tickets seem to be cheaper and less people in the airport. That makes sense. I think there's not a lot of people that like the 1 a.m. either departures or arrival flights. You know, early morning, late night flights, those are always good. Uh, Shannon Radford says, Southwest is flying to Hawaii starting in January 2012. Do you think they will have good deals to the islands? God bless. Shannon, I can almost guarantee they'll have good deals to the islands. And you can imagine that when they first roll out that service, that's probably going to, when they're going to have some of the best deals. And then you can imagine that when Southwest brings the prices down, that a lot of other people are going to be doing that too. So Southwest going to Hawaiian Islands is just a good deal for all of us, frankly. Um... Jenny Fed, uh, who's in Hawaii, says she ate a papaya from the ABC store yesterday. Part of it was bad. Didn't eat that part okay so far. Well, that's good to hear, and it's a bummer that um, that was not good. Uh, you know, I always find it interesting uh, who people ask me to say hello to, and Drew asked me to say hello to his dogs, Jack and Lucy. They love the show. So hello to Drew's dogs, Jack and Lucy. Woof, woof, or is that how I should say hello to dogs? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I speak their language. All right, there's a lot of talk about seating, so let's talk about seating next. Now, the sixth tip to use on an airplane to have a better in-flight experience next time you fly is absolutely about seating. Uh, so before you're picking your seat, uh, go to SeatGuru or SeatExpert.com. SeatGuru, G-U-R-U, -U, SeatExpert. I've got their names in the video description. Uh, and they're sites where you can look at the flight map and people rate whether the seats are good or not. Uh, and some seats are better than others. If you're looking at a seat on a plane, you're like, this aisle looks really great. I wonder why nobody's in it. And you can go on SeatGuru or SeatExpert and say, oh, it's because that aisle doesn't recline, or it's because this particular seat has less legroom, or it's because this seat is missing a window, or it's because this seat uh, often feels vibration from the lavatory or something like that. Um, so seat guru and seat expert, really great. <clears throat> um, also, if you're traveling with somebody else, you know, maybe be creative with how you sit. You don't just have to sit window, middle, aisle, things like that. Uh, if both of you like windows, you can seat windows back to back. If both of you like aisles, you can seat across from each other in the aisle. I've seen a lot of couples, one will book the aisle seat, one will book the window seat, and then they'll hope that nobody books the middle seat. And if somebody does book the middle seat, well, then someone in that couple will be like, hey, do you, would you prefer the window or the aisle? And pretty much always people will switch out of the middle seat. Nobody likes the middle seat. Uh, but that might be a way that you get like a little extra room. Um, another tip uh, that I think this is a really good one, and if there's one you take away from this video, I'd listen to this one, which is when you're picking your seat, if you're on a flight that you think won't be very full. Sometimes the best seats are in the back of a particular section. So let's say you are in business class or you're in uh, economy plus and you're hoping to get like a whole row to yourself. Well, the last row of economy plus is the best row to get a whole row to yourself. Why? When the airlines just like assign people seats when they didn't book them, they start from the front and work their way back. And so if you're at the back of a section, then there will be less people just randomly assigned to sit there uh, and so um, and I, I've noticed this uh, that like check it out next time you're on a long-haul flight and it's only a third full it'll always be the back seats of sections that are always the emptiest um, if you have a short connection sit up front why do you sit up front so you can be the first person off the plane uh, what if you have motion sickness. Well, then you want to sit in the middle of the plane. Why in the middle of the plane? Well, the part with the wings, that's the most stable. The front and the back of the plane can do a little bit of this. So if you're prone to motion sickness, park yourself as much in the middle as possible. Uh, also, sometimes, you know, there are people who really like window seats, but things people don't realize about window seats, window seats are the coldest. Yeah, they're cold from that window, particularly the exit seats. Uh, there was one time I was flying on a plane and I got the exit row seat next to the door and I was wearing sandals and the guy next to me says, yeah, we called that the cold feet seat. And sure enough, like I needed to ask for a blanket and like wrap it around my feet. That's how cold it was. Uh, and exit doors never close perfectly. And so there's always a lot of cold air because you're high up coming in uh, through that door. Um, Dorit says, uh, when they're looking for seats that missing windows really bug them. Yeah, it's annoying, and sometimes you will have that missing or misaligned window. 
Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Other comments. Um, let's see. Remy D says, when I fly southwest, we always take the middle seat one in front of the other. Usually that allows us to get seats uh, right in the front, not just together. Yeah, that's a good tip. And if it's not a long flight, uh, then you're towards the front. You get off sooner. And if you're connecting, you can make it there. Kirk says, on a long flight, I like to go to the bathroom and take selfies. Kirk, do you just is there something about an airplane bathroom that you just love? I'm, I'm curious. Um... William says uh, the whole sitting at the back of a section is what he's doing on his flight from Melbourne, Australia to LAX. Pick the last row, hoping to get the three seats to myself. I'll keep my fingers crossed, and I hope you do too. Um, in Inubitu says, if you are on a smaller CRJ, which are the small planes, uh, the window seats are pretty small. The side of the plane hits my head in those. Yeah, like on the, the really small planes, and there's actually sometimes things that people don't think of. The window seats can often be the smallest seats on planes because they curve. They curve at the top and they curve at the bottom. So window seats often have the least leg room and the least headroom. Um, Doritz says, uh, for the motion sickness, uh, fly on a Dreamliner, the 787, if possible, it bounces lightly through turbulence. Who knew? Okay, that's a great tip. Um, Max Marlowe says, my wife and I are looking to book a flight to Tokyo in March. Is there a better time of year than others to purchase airline tickets? Hmm. I don't really think the time of year matters that much. There is certainly like an ebb and flow to when tickets are cheaper and more expensive. Um, I generally find about the best time to buy tickets to go places, mm, is about three months out like three months or more out. If you start getting closer to three months, then I usually find ticket prices start going up. Um, but, you know, if it's if I'm going in seven months, I'll start checking prices. I'll probably check prices for about two months before I lock in a price because it does fluctuate during the week uh, with sales, when other airlines have sales. So it's pretty dynamic. But if you're often doing searches for that route, you'll generally get a feel for like what the price is, and then when it does drop low, you'll know. Um, also, if you use kayak.com to search prices, that will tell you when they think uh, it's cheapest and kind of be like, oh, the prices are really low. Our suggestion is to buy. That's usually, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty good estimate. I, I mean, as good as, you know, your or my crystal ball will be. The big wom says, Yellow, do you have a favorite airline? Uh, I'm going to answer this in two ways. I'm typically a United flyer. I have over a million miles on United Airlines. My favorite airline, though, is Singapore Airlines. I love Singapore Airlines. It just doesn't go as many places I love to go, but I love Singapore. Thai Airways is pretty good, too. Um... Jenny Fed says, I couldn't believe how cold it said it was outside of the plane on our way to Hawaii. Negative 71 Fahrenheit or colder. Is that correct, Jenny Fed? That is absolutely correct. It is really cold high up in the air. Uh, Clean Extreme says, do not book uh, seats close to the restroom on long hauls. They can stink for the first few rows in front and behind toilets. That's a good tip. Uh, I never like to sit next to the toilets. Chris Jag says, usually I tell the stewardess I've been having major gas and diarrhea. They immediately move me to a row with no one there. Rumi, that's an interesting tip. Uh, that's, uh, that's almost like the tip of, like, if you don't shower for days before getting on Southwest Airlines, you'll magically have nobody sitting next to you. I don't encourage anyone to do that, and please don't think that I do that myself. Uh, Anthony uh, Perenio on Facebook says, I like the aisle seat due to the medication I take. Interesting, Anthony. Uh, Cherry Santiago joined in on Facebook. Uh, good to see you, Cherry. Thanks for joining in. David says, what item do you use most on the plane? David, I'm not sure what you mean by item. Um, I Maybe my iPad? I, I use it all the time to watch, like, movies. Um... Nagir says, related to booking tickets, they booked their tickets to Japan six months out, and they were very reasonable. That is great to hear. Um, all right. Number seven. Recheck your seats at check-in time. Um, so... We talked all this stuff about seats, you've picked your seats, they're perfect. When you go to check in, you're either checking in on the website, you're checking in at the ticket counter, you're checking in at the kiosk, check your seats again. Sometimes they switch equipment, sometimes they do things, and they may have moved your seats. Do not print your seats 
and not pay attention to them and get to the plane and board the plane and be like, oh my gosh, why aren't we next to each other? Uh, but at least ahead of time, if you notice and your seats got hosed, you can still call the airline or you can still ask uh, at the gate. Um, and so somehow, like if your family did get separated, sometimes that might happen, um, like OC Girl and I, when we're traveling, I might get upgraded and she didn't. And so actually I might tell them, please don't upgrade me, please put me back to where I came from. I know this is definitely a first world problem, denying an upgrade, uh, but it's actually something that I do quite a bit when we're traveling, is I may call the airline ahead of time and say, please don't upgrade me, because if they do and they, move my seat and they don't move OC girl's seat, then we'll end up sitting separately. And that's, that's never a winning situation, me sitting in first class and OC girl sitting in economy. All right, the eighth tip for flying on the plane is to treat the flight attendants nicely. The flight attendants are people too. When you get on board the plane, say good morning, good afternoon, thank you, hello, acknowledge them, they are there. If you acknowledge them and treat them like a human, like a nice human, and you say please and thank you, chances are they will treat you better too. Um, and I'll tell you, if I've had good service when I walk off the plane and they're standing there, I tell the flight attendants, Thank you very much for such fantastic service. You should just see how it lights up their day because normally what they're taking is crap all the time. Uh, and by the way, if you've ever wanted to do something for a flight attendant, um, is uh, if you ever get any extra hotel pens, offer them a pen. Flight attendants always say they lose pens, and so if you've got a stack of pens from a hotel, most flight attendants will gladly take some pens off your hands. Um... Let's see. Uh, Chris Jags says, I've noticed that United Airlines has been overbooking seats. Like it a lot. Thought that was illegal. Chris, it is not illegal to overbook seats. It's perfectly legal for them to overbook seats. They still do it. Uh, it's only legal for them to, like, drag you off the plane. That's what's illegal, right? Um, Kevin Nguyen says, is it true that military personnel and veterans get special seats and special lounges at airports? Kevin, typically not special seats. Right? They just book the same tickets that we all do. Um, but uh, there's the USO, the United Services Organization, and they do have lounges around the world for military personnel. Uh, and actually, there's a big one uh, here in San Diego, the Bob Hope USO. Um, Drew Lawson says, do you usually slug beers on flights? If nice to attendant, they will keep the beers flowing. That's very true, Drew. Uh, I am a teetotaler. Uh, so I typically typically don't drink a lot of alcohol on board the plane, uh, which really makes it a waste of like business class on me because they're come by and they're like, do you want some champagne or wine? And I usually take some champagne and want like a little bit just out of the hole. I'm here, um, but uh, yeah, I wish I could enjoy it more so that I could get more of my money's worth in first or business class. Uh, Mark Haley on Facebook answers the military uh, thing. He says, I am a military spouse and we don't get special seats. That I can tell you in quotes. Thank you, Mark, for that feedback. Um, Chin Mei says, do you know if Southwest overbooks as well? I would imagine pretty much every airline overbooks. Um... Earshad Ali says, why is it I noticed that all American airlines use plastic utensils compared to the other world major airlines? I don't know, Earshad. I've been on a lot of flights where they use metal utensils, uh, but maybe that's in business class or first class. I think American Airlines internationally just really can't compete with a lot of big, either the European or the Asian carriers. They're just really kind of sad. Uh, Kirk says, have you ever been on a flight when a disagreement happened causing a delay? Not between two other passengers, Kirk, but I have certainly between passengers on the plane and the flight attendants, particularly really to seats. The one time I was on this flight and there was a woman who she booked a seat and I guess it was this thing where like, and then they moved her and she was like now in the seat that was like um, across from the bathroom. And she was like, oh my God, I can't sit in this seat. I won't be able to sleep. I'll just be looking at that bright light coming from the bathroom. I mean, this lady was in tears and the flight attendants are like, Flight's full. That's it. That's the only seat. Do you want to fly? And she's like, no, I want another seat. And they're like, do you want to fly? That's your seat. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more about um, relax and just let it go with the flow uh, in one of our later numbers. But that was probably what she should have done and just chilled out about the whole situation a little bit. Um, Beth uh, says, when are you going back to Vegas? 
I'm not sure best. Uh, I rarely know my travel schedule ahead of time. But uh, I'm not that far from Vegas, so never know. Might come up soon, might come up later. Uh, Najer says, Singapore Airlines uses metal utensils in economy. Yeah, that's because Singapore Airlines is actually like a good airline. <laughs> yeah, and uh, doesn't try to be the cheapest airline in the world. Uh, all right. Um, so Tanner Wilson commented on the drinking no on shorter flights, yes on longer flights. All right. Uh, so let's go on to number nine. Uh, we had comments about food and snacks earlier. Uh, tip number nine for going on a plane to have a better in-flight experience is to always carry snacks. Always carry snacks. You know, I know sometimes people say never use the word never. Never use the word always. Always carry snacks. Why? You never know when your flight's going to be delayed. You never know when you're going to be sitting on the runway or the tarmac for four hours. You never know when your flight's going to land someplace else. I've been on a flight from San Diego to Las Vegas, which, by the way, is a one-hour flight, if you don't know that distance. It's a one-hour flight, San Diego, Las Vegas, direct flight. I've been on one of those that took six hours. Why? Because it made a stop in Palm Springs. Why did it make a stop in Palm Springs? Because there were thunderstorms and it stopped in Palm Springs, an airport that nothing was open and there was no food and there was no snacks and they didn't have any on board. But gee, I had snacks and so I was not ready to chew my arm off. I have a whole pocket in my backpack just dedicated to snacks. And actually sometimes I never even eat them. They're just, uh, well, it's, so UL Kingpin says they have emergency food on board. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess in like a real emergency they would. In one of these things, they're like, yeah, here's some, here's some crackers or here's some trail mix. You know, but that's not the same thing as like being hungry and going and saying, okay, I've got my own food. Like emergency food, it's probably never delicious food. Uh, so what should you carry? Um, nuts, fruit, trail mix, energy bars. Uh, my favorite energy bars to carry around are Cliff Bars. Uh, they last a long time. They mush around. It's okay. Chocolate's pretty good. Um, but don't ever put your food on the table, the tray table that comes down from the seat. <gasps> the tray table is gross. Uh, you know, when they do like studies about what the dirtiest place on airplane is, it's often the tray table. If you're a germaphobe, I've seen a lot of people bring like sanitary wipes and wipe it down. If I'm in business or first class and I get the, the, the hot towel, I'll use that to wipe my tray table down. Um, all right. So, uh, and then there was a comment earlier, a question earlier about what to eat that doesn't upset your stomach. And somebody said they ate a whole bunch of macadamia nuts and it, um, like was gross. Uh, like bananas, pretty good. Chocolate's pretty good. I think, um, drinking like apple juice is good. Uh, drinking ginger ale as a drink is pretty good too. Things that soothe the stomach. Uh, Dorit says, bring a salami, cheese, and bread. Yeah, that's a good snack, too. If you have a big baguette, it's probably easy. Jenny Fed says, my wife is wearing a bright yellow shirt in your honor, said to let you know. That is awesome, Jenny Fed. Very cool. Uh, and uh, if you have any cool Hawaii pictures, like in yellow shirts, definitely uh, post it up on my Facebook page. I'll, like, reshare it for everybody else. That's cool. Uh, anybody in yellow shirts is more than welcome to do that. I love seeing yellow shirts around the world. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Remy D says, I always carry protein bars with me just in case. Uh, that's good, Remy. Brandon says, I always bring a big bag of candies in my backpack, mainly Skittles. All right, very nutritious. Skittles, definitely colorful. Um, Kirk says, cookie and a banana. Um, and uh, UAL Kingpin says, don't drink the tea or coffee. The water's not very clean. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that like wherever they store the water or something might contain some bacteria. And there are absolutely times where when I've gotten the tea and I've drank it, I'm like, mm, this, this tastes not like the tea I would think. Uh, so that's a good tip. Um, Brandon says, I drink Sprite as a stomach soother. That's a good tip too. Sprite has a little bit of sugar in it as well, so that helps. Uh, and then uh, Irshad says, if you're flying coach, how do you request kosher meals? Um, typically call the airline, right? Pretty much most special meals for the airline call the airline. Uh, and uh, so we'll talk about special meals in just a second, but uh, number 10 is uh, when you're on a plane, if you're buying food, have a credit card handy. Most airlines have pretty much gone 
cashless. And if you don't have a credit card, then it's not going to work, right? And bring a visa. You know, don't bring like JCB, Diners Club, um, you know, some like random no-name credit card. Bring a visa so that it actually works and you can actually get food. Um, not that airline food is the best food, but if that's what you're planning to do, have your credit card not packed away in your backpack, not packed away someplace you can't get it, you know, have it be prepared. Najera says, do they do MasterCard? Yes, Visa and MasterCard are two that typically all airlines will recommend. I just generally recommend Visa as a worldwide traveler standard because I find Visa is the most widely accepted around the world. Uh, Mark Haley comments on Facebook and says, Great idea about the hot towel on the tray table in first class. Uh, booking a trip first class from Seattle to Miami around New Year's. Any Miami Fort Lauderdale videos with Yellow Productions in the future? Little Havana, South Beach, Everglades, so much to see there. I've got like three. I've got a review of a hotel in South Beach. I've got like riding the Thriller speedboat in Miami, which is pretty fun. It's like a really fast speedboat. Uh, and I've got a video down in Key West, which if you're heading over there and you've got a, like an extra day, I think Key West is a pretty neat place to check out. Those are like from a long time ago though, so probably not my best videos, just giving you a thing of warning. Um, Kirk says, bring durian fruit as a snack. Yes, I'm sure your fellow airline uh, friends would love that very much. Joshua Morella says, this probably seems like common sense, but bring a pack of headphones because most airlines have a headphone jack for the mini TVs and some brands like Beats by Dre are great for noise canceling. All right, that's a good tip. Uh, I always bring uh, noise canceling headphones with me on the plane. Matthew says, do they accept PayPal? Generally on board the plane, they do not accept PayPal because not every flight has internet connections. All uh, right. Let's go on to number seven. Somebody asked about special meals, uh, and number 11 is, if you want to eat first on long flights, order a special meal. If you order the kosher meal, the vegetarian meal, the gluten-free meal, they will serve you first. Uh, and so that way you don't have to wait for everybody to get their food. You get your food right at the beginning, and then you can go to sleep if that's what you want to do. Uh, and most airlines do offer special meals, so if you want that, make sure you do it ahead of time. A lot of airlines have like a 72-hour, three-day cutoff, so make sure you call them ahead. If you get to the airport or you're on the plane and you're like, I want a special meal, they're like, eh, that's too bad we didn't load it. Number 12, the 12th tip uh, to make your in-flight experience better is to drink plenty. Drink plenty. It is dry on the plane. Planes are dehydrating. Do not get dehydrated. There's nothing to be more exhausting, especially when you get off a long flight, than if you didn't drink anything the whole time. When they come by with water, take a water. Always bring a bottle of water too, because you're also never going to know, again, that stranded situation where you're six hours going to Vegas, stuck in Palm Springs, three hours on the tarmac. Always have a bottle of water with you. Always have a bottle of water with you. On a 45-minute flight, always have a bottle of water with you, because you never know, 45 minutes or four hours, always bring a bottle of water. Always. Did you get that? I hope so. Anthony says plenty of water. That's great. He heard me. Um, and, uh, but maybe not too much alcohol, right? Like, uh, sometimes I've been next to those people who just, I, they were connecting and it's like, oh, you started this flight smashed, didn't you? Right? That's a pretty good way to be exhausted where you're ending up. Uh, and alcohol typically is actually a bit dehydrating, right? Uh, and so that will not help you get hydrated. Um, let's see, Dorit says, remember that Wi-Fi is uh, not a sure deal and drops out over the ocean's bummer. Yeah, it does, like Hawaii is a great example. Though some flights, some international flights do have satellite Wi-Fi uh, that will work everywhere, but not all of them do. Uh, Kirk says, but you can't bring water through TSA. Yes, it's true, but Kirk, from my live stream last week, I encouraged everybody to bring a bottle, like an empty bottle with them, and then just fill it up when they get through security at a water fountain. Mmm. That's it. Uh, Matthew says, do you drink on the plane? Uh, water. Water. So my drinks of choice on a plane are water, apple juice, ginger ale, 
the end. That's a pretty much what I drink on a plane. Yes, if they're coming by with a little champagnes or maybe a little bottle of expensive wine or something, I might have that. I don't do the beer or any of those sorts of things on the plane. Um, Kyle asks if I smoke weed with the panda in the toilet of the plane. Mm, no, no, can't say I've had that experience. All right, number 13. Tip number 13 is related to being dry. Bring some lotion on the plane, right? Some lotion, maybe for your hands, maybe for your arms, maybe for your face. For me, where I really like some lotion is on my elbows. I find that, you know, being on those armrests and things like that, my elbows get super dry. And so having a little bit of hand lotion, particularly for 14 hours, is a great way to keep your hands from just totally drying out and frizzing out. Particularly if you're traveling, and you're at a hotel and they've got a little bottle of lotion, no reason not to take that with you. Just store it in your backpack or purse or something like that. Tip number 14, bring a toothbrush. If you're on a long flight and you want to sleep, sometimes it's nicer to sleep if you're brushing your teeth before you go to sleep. Uh, and so if you're in a hotel that has toothbrushes that are already packaged, bring that uh, and you can tell United thinks it's important to have a toothbrush because in the United Amenity Kit, there is always a toothbrush. A little toothbrush with a cover and uh, then there's always a little, mm, there's always a little toothpaste too. Boop. All right. And speaking of lotion, there's always a lotion and a chapstick. So that's another good tip. Bring a chapstick so your lips don't dry out. And I mentioned earplugs. It's not just me, but there you go. United's got the earplugs. And if you weren't sure you've never used an earplug, they actually have tips on there about how to use an earplug. Roll the earplug and put it in your ear. Thank you very much, United, for that excellent tip. All right. Uh, tip number... Uh, tip number 15 to make your in-flight experience better is um, if you are planning to take a sleeping pill, either a sleeping pill or Dramamine or something like that, don't take it until wheels up and you're in the air. I can't tell you how many times I've known people that have taken a sleeping pill, either in the airport or on the plane because they were thinking it's gonna take off and then the flight doesn't go. And now they have to connect, they have to do something else, they have to go someplace and they, are, um, they are, um, really tired at that point. Maybe that's how I seemed right there as I was distracted, but, um, they're really tired. So only take it when the wheels are up because when the flight is in the air, then you know you have a good chance to actually be in the air and there's time to sleep. Uh, all right. Number 16, the 16th thing is to have plenty of entertainment. Um, bring a tablet, bring a Kindle, bring a laptop. Make sure you have the latest airline app if you are live, not live streaming, but if you want to watch the movies on the plane and a lot of, lot of airlines, United, American Airlines, this and that, they've gone to this personal device entertainment where you can stream things, but only if you have the app. Like if you just have a web browser, you get like limited things. So you have to have the app and typically the latest airline app. Make sure your batteries are charged. Charge your iPad, charge your Kindle, charge your laptop. Uh, don't expect to be able to get charged at the airport, charged um, on the airline. You know, don't expect that power jack to actually work, right? Bring some extra batteries with you, right? Bring your phone charger battery uh, so that you can do that. Um, and, but you know, bring a power adapter for the long flight in the event that you do have power. Uh, and I often always carry with this little portable power strip um, so that I can plug it in, more people can plug in, because there's always less outlets on the plane than there are seats, right? Which is just sort of a drag. Um, Anthony, uh, related to lotion, says also bring the hand sanitizer with lotion. Yeah, that's a good tip too. Keep your hands uh, clean. Chelsea says always bring a book. Physical copies can't go wrong. No batteries. I agree, Chelsea. Uh, and certainly with travel guides, I don't have any in easy reach, but uh, generally on the plane, I bring travel guides. Like if I'm going to Seoul, I'll have a couple of Seoul travel books with me and that's what I'll be reading on the flight. And yes, you can get the Kindle edition or this and that, but yeah, that paper, it always works.
Mm. Deritz says, uh, download Netflix can watch uh, offline. That's a good tip. Uh, I've never tried that. Um, Urshad says, your Zurich video really helped me out. That's great to hear, Urshad. Chris Jag says, you're a travel guru. How many years have you been traveling around the world religiously? Oh, uh, boy. I don't know. 14, something like that. I think my first big international trip uh, and probably what started me on the travel bug was when OC Girl and I went to Japan for the first time in like 2004, 2005, something like that. I made a video on that trip and that's kind of what started this whole Yellow Productions thing. Uh, Mark Haley says, he's going off to bed. Good night, Mark. Thanks for joining in. And he says, congratulations on 75,000 subscribers. Such a great YouTube channel. Really phenomenal work. Mark, I appreciate it. Thank you for the kind words. All right, let's go to uh, number 17, because this one's easy. And uh, it's right here. Always bring a pen. I talked about pens. The amenity kit has a pen. I'm going to stop opening it to show you everything that's in there. But there's a pen in the amenity kit because how many times have you been on a plane and been asked to fill out a form? You always fill out forms when you're on planes, immigration forms, custom forms. They never have pens on the plane. Bring a pen, have it handy so you can fill out that form and you're not having to fill it out when you get off the plane using the airport pens because if you can fill it out like one of the things that i always say and this is related to bring a pen is if you're going to like a big international destination and you're sitting near the front of the plane get off the plane and go to passport control immediately don't dawdle don't stop at the bathroom don't fill out your form go to passport control and get in line because if you're in a big 787 dreamliner if you're at the front of that 400 people, that'll be a lot less time than if you're at the back of those 400 people. So get yourself there quickly. Um, there was a question uh, that somebody asked um, what my opinion of the uh, Marriott and Sheraton merger was. Uh, I like it. Uh, I've been a Marriott elite for a long time, and so just more hotels in the network. I think it's all good. Chris Jag says, I always forgot the pen. I always thought you couldn't bring a pen through customs. You can absolutely bring a pen through customs as long as it's not a weapon. Um, Urshad says, do you recommend wearing slip-on shoes? I've noticed a lot of people remove their shoes on the plane. I, on long flights, remove my shoes on the plane. I'll either wear Nike sneakers or I wear um, reef sandals that uh, they're not like flip-flops, but they... Um, like they're almost like a shoe sandal, like a Keen sandal or a Teva sandal. Um, so those would be my recommendations. 18. When you're on the plane, don't just sit in your seat for 10 hours. Oh my gosh, you'll get up and you'll be stiff and you can't move. Like get up every once in a while. Get up, walk around, stretch. Um, you know, and if you're in an aisle seat, like get up every hour. I usually get up every hour. I generally am watching some, like on my iPad or whatever, I might be watching some sort of a show that's maybe like 45 minutes or an hour long. Every time an episode is done, I'm going to get up and walk. Maybe go to the bathroom. If not, just get up, get a cup of water, uh, stretch, sit down. There was a question about sleeping. So 19 is sleep when it's time to sleep, usually after the first service. Um, so... There was a whole thing about etiquette and windows, but if you're on like long international flights, here's how it usually rolls, right? The plane takes off, they bring drinks, then they bring food. After they bring food, they're done with service. They dim the lights, the flight attendants, they go to just hang out, chill out. They rest for four to five hours and then they come back and maybe do a snack or do another service. And so that's your time to sleep. After the first meal service, that's the time to sleep because it's the quietest. So if you are planning to sleep, plan that time right after the first meal service because then when they start doing snacks and they do the final meal service it's just really hard to sleep so use that time and that's the best way to avoid jet lag right is to sleep as much as you can on the flight if you can sleep on the flight you'll be less tired when you get there anthony agrees with me and he says i do the same i get up every hour uh, it's KH says, when I was here just now, you were tip number one and there were only nine people watching. Hey, well, there's way more now, so that's awesome. I think we're up to a hundred. It says peak concurrent 111 in this new interface. I can't actually tell how many are watching at any given point. I have to figure out how to be able to do that. Um, all right. And, uh, tip number 20, 20 
is to relax. Um, don't stress out about your connection, getting to the gate late, slow opening the doors. It doesn't matter. You can't do anything about it anyway, right? And th this is like a hard one for people. They'll be sitting on the plane. They're asking the flight attendant, am I going to make my connection? What do you think? Does it matter? Does it really matter? Like if you're in the middle of a flight with those five hours, you can't do anything about it anyway. So if there are issues, try and relax as much as possible. I know it's going to ruin some plans. Just deal with it. Just deal with whatever comes up. And if you have that mindset, travel will be a lot easier, right? And if you're going up to the flight attendants afterwards, you get off the plane, you miss your connection, um, just uh, be easy on them, right? Like they didn't delay your flight. They didn't cancel their flight. They're trying to help you out. Relax and you will get further when you're relaxed than when you're totally stressed out about it. Um, and uh, Naguer says, so true, the journey is part of the destination, so enjoy it the best you can. Excellent. That is a great tip. All right, so now we're going to do the giveaway. Uh, and before we do the giveaway, I want to tell you, for those of you who are tuning in to the next live stream, the next live stream will be in two weeks. It will be Monday, October 15th at 8 p.m., 8 p.m. Los Angeles time. Uh, and as usual, follow me on Facebook for more updates of the topic, announcements beforehand. You can find the link to my Facebook page in there. So the entrance for this amenity kit, uh, I asked people on Facebook uh, for what, they, what their favorite airline is and why. And we got um, 49 entries. And so... I'm gonna try some magic on this, uh, and I'm gonna try to show you the Facebook comments on the screen. Hmm. If for some reason my audio drops out and you can't hear me anymore, then it'll be done. But I think these comments are interesting, and after I've read through them, then I'm gonna generate a random number, one through 49, and then that's the person who's going to win this amenity kit. Uh, all right, so. Uh, and Blue Goo, related to uh, viewers, says, I was number 100. Hooray, that's awesome. And Brandon, you're right. It is fantastic that there were 100 people. Okay, so in order to show these comments, I need to go over here.